In the year 1886, the French scientist Gaston Maspero was doing his usual work, in the museum, taking mummies out of sarcophagi, examining them and making the necessary notes. But the contents of one of the sarcophagi frightened even the experienced scientist. So, at first glance, it was a completely unremarkable sarcophagus. But that's what caught Gaston's attention. Usually on the funerary box of the Egyptian pharaohs and other nobles, there were all sorts of signs, which gave to understand which person approximately belonged to the remains. However, this sarcophagus did not have any markings. Even stranger, the body was wrapped in sheep skin, which the ancient Egyptians considered unclean. Gaston Maspero unwrapped the mummy and the first thing he discovered was that its feet and hands were bound for some unknown reason. When Gaston turned his gaze to the mummy's head, he found her face frozen in a screaming expression. Because of the strange clothing, bound hands, and haggard expression, experts assumed that the man had been poisoned or possibly tortured before his death. The truth emerged only some time later, in the process of further research, scientists found many similar remains. It turned out that such a screaming facial expression had nothing to do with the painful death of a mummified person. The point is that if the jaw was not specially fixed in the process of mummification of the body, it was naturally opened in the process of decomposition, and that is how the cry was obtained. So the mummies with a terrifying expression on their faces, got a perfectly logical explanation and has nothing to do with mysticism. Headless Gladiators during archaeological excavations in the province of York in England, several skeletons were discovered. All of them belonged to men aged 45 years. This finding would not have been so surprising had it not been for one important circumstance all the skeletons were headless, and the skull was either missing or located in the area of the skeleton's chest or legs. Later scholars found that all the burials could be dated to the 2nd or 4th century AD. At that time, the area was part of the Northern Roman Empire. Since most of the skeletons were tall and showed signs of trauma, scientists assumed they were gladiator bones. Genetic analysis of the seven decapitated skeletons showed that most of them were from Great Britain, while one may have come from the Middle East. The large number of injuries, as well as the absence of a skull, may suggest that the remains belonged to the military. One way or another, there is no definite answer to the question of why the skeletons were decapitated. If you like videos with interesting finds, be sure to let me know, put a like under this video and write a comment. Traces of a witch hunt Frightening archaeological discoveries can involve more than just bones and skulls. A 15th century church in Aberdeen, Scotland, houses an interesting artifact. In the chapel there is a stone column with an iron ring sticking out of it. It is possible that this ring was used to imprison accused witches at the end of the 16th century. At the time, there was a series of witch trials in Aberdeen, and generally throughout Scotland, known as the Great Witch Hunt. About 400 were put on trial and about 200 were executed, all within a year. Their deaths were horrible, those condemned were often burned. Obviously, many of those accused were not witches at all. Historians are still arguing about the true reasons for the outbreak of the witch hunt during that period. In the middle of the 19th century, the English physician and traveler John Ray explored the Canadian coast of the Arctic Ocean. During the journey he communicated with the Eskimos, who told him horror stories about a lost expedition whose members had perished in these places. According to the Eskimos, they went crazy and even engaged in cannibalism. The remains of the members of this expedition were found more than a hundred years later, in the 80s of the 20th century and only then was it determined exactly to whom the remains belonged. In the 19th century many seafarers were puzzled by the search for the legendary Northwest Passage, that is, the path from the Atlantic to the Pacific Ocean through the Arctic Ocean. The search for the legendary Northwest Passage took many lives, including the lives of 129 explorers who set out in search of a sea route through the Arctic in the year 1845. The expedition was led by Admiral John Franklin. In the end, this operation failed, all the crew members died of starvation, scurvy and hypothermia, and traces of lead poisoning were found on many of the remains, probably due to the bad canned food they ate. High levels of lead in the body could cause vomiting, weakness, and convulsions, meaning that the death of many crew members was excruciating. Not all of the travelers were properly buried. Also, the condition of some of the remains did confirm that cannibalism among the crew was present. Headless Viking Mass Grave 
archaeologists were excavating on the side of an old road in the Dorset region of Great Britain. Suddenly, instead of the expected boulders or tools, they unearthed something truly frightening, a mass grave with the remains of 54 decapitated Vikings. The scientists began their analysis by clearly recording the position of the bones, at which point they noticed oddities in their placement, namely that the leg, arm, head, and torso bones were neatly arranged in separate piles. So what happened? One theory of the archaeologists was that the local villagers somehow survived the Viking attack and subsequently captured and executed the attackers themselves, later burying them in a similar manner. However, this hypothesis did not explain why the Vikings were beheaded with precise sword blows from the front. If it had been an execution, the blows would have been delivered from behind. In fact, archaeologists themselves later revised their theory, suggesting that this might have happened because the Vikings fell victim to some unusual sacrificial ritual. Nevertheless, there is simply no mention of any such rituals common in the area at the time, so the real reason for this mass burial has yet to be discovered. In the 80s, an expedition explored mountain caves in New Zealand, and in one of them they found something that looked like a dinosaur leg. It turned out that the paw and bones belonged to an extinct non-flying bird named Moa. About 700 to 800 years ago, the Moa became extinct in New Zealand, but until then they had been living on Earth for many millions of years. According to scientists, the ancient Moa appeared more than 15 million years ago. This particular find, which was found in a cave, is more than 3,000 years old and is perfectly preserved. By the way, the moa is the only bird species that had no wings at all. We have already told you about the frightening findings associated with witch hunts, but about a century later, a period of vampire hunting began. The real history of Eastern European vampires is quite possibly more macabre than the fictional stories of Dracula. Around the 17th century in Poland, some people were buried with sickles around their necks or stones jammed in their mouths. These precautions were taken to prevent the dead from rising again in the form of vampires, which the locals believed would return to continue sucking blood. However, it later turned out that some of these burials, which referred to the burial of vampires, actually had nothing to do with it. No injuries were found on the remains and scientists concluded that the cause of death of these people was a cholera epidemic. The phrase, chemical weapons, can only be heard in relation to military conflicts of the last century, but archaeologists have found the remains of soldiers who were victims of this particular type of weapon 2,000 years ago. During the siege of the city in Syria, then controlled by the Roman Empire, Persian soldiers dug tunnels under the city walls and wanted to use the tunnel to undermine the walls. The Romans retaliated by digging their own tunnels to intercept the Persians, but the Persians heard them coming. Some archaeologists believe that the Persians prepared a terrible trap a cloud of poisonous chemical smoke that literally dissolved the lungs of the victims. This hypothesis was suggested by the location of the remains of warriors. We have guessed before that ancient battles were especially brutal, but hardly anyone assumed that everything was so brutal. In the year 2010, researchers discovered the skeletons of a family of Neanderthals in a cave in Spain. But what makes the find particularly frightening is that the remains showed signs of cannibalism. Most likely, those Neanderthals whose remains were found by researchers were victims of another group of Neanderthals. Archaeologists are inclined to think that there were cases of cannibalism among Neanderthals during hard times. All this was happening before the territory was inhabited by humans. The Neanderthals, although belonging to the human species, are still not our direct ancestors. By the way, despite the fact that their skull and brain size were larger than that of modern humans, their mental abilities were much lower. Evidence of human sacrifice is found by archaeologists all over the world, but one example, found in the year 2008, seems particularly strange. In an ancient building in what is now Syria, archaeologists found strangely arranged human and animal bones three human skeletons lay side by side. Based on the unusual damage to the skeleton and other details, researchers have identified one of the skeletons as a possible ancient acrobat. Scientists, having carefully studied the findings, suggested that the remains belonged to a group of ancient acrobats who had been sacrificed to stop a natural disaster. Perhaps these people were let down by the fact that they were famous people of their time. Contemporaries decided that if they sacrificed them, it would be most effective. 
one of the mysterious finds of archaeologists are the so-called figurines of the ancient civilization of the Kimbai. These artifacts were found on the territory of modern Colombia. The greatest attention deserves jewelry figurines in the form of airplanes. When you find out that they were created 2000 years ago, that fact becomes truly amazing. That is, they are so ahead of their time that some believe their creation was inspired by aliens or even time travelers. The reason these theories cannot be dismissed is that if these figures were recreated to the size of a real airplane, they could theoretically fly. True, most scientists are rather skeptical about this idea. They tend to believe that the winged figures of the Kimbi were stylized images of birds, lizards, amphibians, flying fish and insects, which were typical for that region. Don't forget to like it if you found this video interesting. Subscribe to the channel, click on the bell to always be informed about new videos and, of course, leave your comments under this video.